Hey fellow Impact fans, BQ here. I didn't do an Impact review this week uh, due to the holiday. And I actually now, I'm, I'm speaking to you right now on Sunday. I just watched the episode. I've seen a lot of social media chatter on it saying it was really wasn't worth your time. So I kind of took my time. And now that I'm kind of sitting, kicking in before I get into some homework, um, I watched the episode. So... I want to give my quick thoughts on it just to do um, its diligence because I do try to review this show every week with Rowan Adam. So let's talk about it real quick. And I'm not going to get into this whole like drawn out thing regarding this by any means. But here's my general thing with this. I, I'm not a fan of holiday episodes. And um, th this probably adds to that list of ep holiday episodes I don't really care for. Did I hate it? No. I mean, there were some uh, there were some parts I found kind of funny and and, um, and and entertaining at times. But Impact right now can't afford to phone it in, and it's almost like they could have gone against the status quo and delivered on a holiday episode. And uh, you know, it, it, it's like. I don't know what it is when there's a holiday episode that they're like, okay, you know what? Just phone this one in. Let's just let's just deliver some nonsense. Uh, the turkey suit challenge, I, I'm not like really against it. I mean, I guess it's kind of fun. It's it's tradition, and that's fine. But uh, I didn't really need to watch Robbie E wrestle twice, and. He, it, it kind of reminded me of how far he fell from when he kind of had the Jersey Shore gimmick with Big Rob. I'm like, man, he, that he really like was working that gimmick as a, as a pretty, pretty good heel. And then uh, just what he ended up becoming later on, it just it's it was kind of sad to see. Um, the first match, well, before I even get into these matches, so again, I'll count my overall my overall thoughts about it. Um, it was just comedy when comedy wasn't needed. And, you know, I'm taking this course in the military right now. I'm retraining, so I don't get into that too much. I used to be a cop in the, uh, in the military, did it for 15 years. I decided, um, to go a safer route, um, for my family and for a skill that I could learn, you know, uh, learn a skill that could translate to more money on the outside. So now I'm cross training over it to, um, I'm an aircraft mechanic now. So that's the school I'm going through right now, kind of the general course and everything. I have this instructor, he thinks he is so funny and he's not funny at all. I mean, and, and he's older, so I'm 38, so I'm older, but this guy's, you know, in his sixties, and everyone in my class, because they're, these are all like brand new recruits out of basic training, they're, most of my classmates are like 18, 19. You know, I, I'm reclassing from one career field to the other, so I'm kind of like the exception in the class. Everyone else is really young. And he's just telling these jokes, and they're just, and they're going way over people's heads. And, you know, they're not funny. No one's buying into it. And he's laughing at himself. He, he's cracking himself up. And that's what I got when I was watching this. Humor and comedy is a gift. It's not just something I, you know, someone where you just walk in and say, I decide I want to be funny. I want to be a funny guy when I grow up. It doesn't work like that. It's a natural gift just like athleticism is. You feel where I'm going with this? We see it in wrestling too much where it's, let's, let's try to be funny, and it's just not. So kind of some, kind of some bad comedy in this. And I really want the company to get away from it. If someone is funny, like Eli Drake's funny, EC3's funny, Sienna's funny, roll with that, but not in a corny way. And I thought it hurt Eli Drake a little bit because we're utilizing his charisma and his humor, but we're doing it in a corny manner. And that's what I didn't care for very much. But just to run down the episode real quick. So the very first Thanksgiving 2008 Turkey Suit Challenge was Alex Shelley, Sheikh Abdul-Bashir, and R Rhino. I was honestly just, I was kind of watching it, kind of, sort of. I've said this a few times. It's kind of sad 
seeing how the the old TNA audience was and how it is now, I mean, it's it's kind of it, it actually really hurts to see that at times. Um, but I've also said I don't think today's wrestling fan is anything like wrestling fans from 15 years ago. Like they got a lot more excited than they do today. But with that being said, the whole you know the check for twenty five thousand dollars was kind of funny considering the financial problems this com company is in. I mean, it's, it's just like making themselves a, a running joke. So uh, I didn't really care for it. Uh, they talked that what I did like is that they, they hyped last week, or I mean, sorry, next week quite a bit. And there's a lot of really good matches. I actually thought all those matches were for this episode when I saw them on social media. Um, so they're actually been pushing them well in advance. I think there's a lot of really good matches for next week and I'm going to do a separate upload um, tomorrow talking about the knockouts and the knockouts tournament but I think that's all looking uh, really good for next week I think that's an episode we we really don't want to miss um, so 2011 that's Eric Young versus Robbie E I didn't have a lot of interest in this it was cool to see uh, the pile driver um, I really didn't recall this match so when Robbie E initially won it I was kind of like does is Eric Young wearing the turkey suit like usually it's a it's like the heels put on the turkey suit so uh you know they restarted the match I don't know what he hit him with it looked like it was almost like a I stepped away to go to the bathroom and I kind of came back and they restarted the match I didn't even catch what he hit him with it looked like a little ball rolled up gauze so in the comments let me know what the hell that was i um it's too long ago for me to really remember and then we get the grado and robbie e one from last year didn't like it last year didn't like it this year grado is from the uk they don't celebrate thanksgiving so why is he in this match why is he wearing a turkey suit um and it's i kind of there was a theme tonight was incorporating a lot of stars who don't celebrate thanksgiving um and getting Thanksgiving moments from Canadians. So, I don't know. Maybe my Canadians listeners can uh, drop some knowledge in the comments. Is there a... Uh, do you guys kind of celebrate it? <laughs> it was just... I didn't... I know a lot of those um, stars, you know, live in the United States. So, maybe that's what it was. But um, just, just confused with it. Especially especially with Ali talking about it. But... um. You know, it was an opportunity to really deliver a solid show. And considering that the company is watched in so many different countries, uh, to, you know, to, to really cater to the American audience, which is, which is one of their smaller audiences with this kind of silly show, I think was just a missed opportunity. So the match itself, I actually, it actually wasn't that bad. I, I didn't hate the match, to be honest. I did like a few of the talents in this, so that kind of helped. Um, but lots of comedy. Um, it, it was KM, Phantasma, Chris Adonis, Laurel Van Ness, and Caleb Conley versus Eddie Edwards, Richard Justice, Ali Garza Jr., Falaba. So we've got comedy wrestlers in um, KM. I'm going to throw Chris Adonis in that category. Laurel Van Ness, Caleb Conley, who's becoming a comedy wrestler. Richard Justice, Allie, who's not a comedy wrestler, but has such a lighthearted gimmick that she can, you know, be factored into that. Um, and Falaba, lots of comedy, comedy in this in this match. A lot of comedy gimmicks. And you know, speaking about speaking of Allie, when she they interviewed her a couple times for Thanksgiving, and she was a little more serious. I know it wasn't really like in character, but. I almost felt like they were transitioning a little more serious. And even her backstage thing with Mackenzie, like she was silly alley, but then she almost, she exuded a bit of a different character a little bit to me. I don't know if anyone else felt, felt that way. So anyway, we got all those comedy people. Um, and I don't think Allie should be associated with, with comedy right now if she's going to be pushed in the knockouts division in the way that I think she is. And then you've got guys who should be nowhere near comedy, which is Phantasma and Eddie Edwards and Garza Jr. So Garza Jr. is someone you're trying to push in the X Division, 
had him in the main event for a little while. So you got guys who really shouldn't be in the in the um, in, in comedy. We knew from the beginning, before they even rang the bell, that Chris Adonis was going to lose this match. I, I don't think anyone thought different. Maybe some of you did. I sure as hell didn't. I felt it was incredibly ter- telegraphed. Tele- telegraphed. I'm sorry. So the whole evening when they had the backstage segments with you know, sure, first they show Robert Irvine, and I just thought of all the missed opportunities the company has had over the last several years and cross promotion with huge stars. Just, just missed opportunities. Even Slammiversary, you know, it was Dan Joe Williams uh, partnering with an unknown, unnamed wrestler against two unnamed wrestlers wrestling for an unnamed company. <laughs> you know, just awful cross promotion opportunities. Just. Uh, I mean, good cross promotion promotion opportunities, but it's just an awful the way they've handled it. So I didn't really have a problem with the whole Eli Drake and, and you know kind of being funny and everything. But the corny ass music they had in the background is not something you should have in the background while the global champion is on the screen, even if he's a naturally funny guy. And it's almost like well, we don't we don't want to go all in on Eli Drake's humor, so let's add some corniness to it so it can be wrestling funny too um and they had a food fight after the match so chris adonis he loses you know we we all knew it was going to happen puts on a costume there's a food fight after the match i remember oh god it was during uh one of the broken hearty segments where I, i just got into it was on social media with some people Oh, TNA, this and this and this. I was like, enjoy your food fights on Monday Night Raw. Because it was actually, um, it was right after a Thanksgiving episode and they did a food fight. And uh, Impact did a freaking food fight. And, I, you know, they looked like they are having fun. The, the crowd kind of looked like they are kind of having fun with it. But, man, wrestling cliche one-on-one. And then, and then just the pie in the ring where you knew Eddie Edwards was going to move. And Eli Drake, Drake gets the pie. I mean, gosh, it, I, I, it, <laughs> I'm almost speechless because our global champion shouldn't be involved with comedy. Like The Rock, who they often compare him to, he was he's like the funniest wrestler of all time. But he was still like a badass too. It wasn't you know comedy gimmicks, and it's, it's it it seems like that's where they what they fall back on with Eli Drake. And then Chris Adonis, I think, really hurts him. Like, there's times where I'm like, man, he plays that bodyguard henchman role really good. And then there's times where it, it's it, he adds this corniness to it. If you've watched the GFW Amped Anthology, you know, and they were pumping up his match with Brian, whatever the hell it is, that Kerr Hawkins dude in WWE, I always forget his, what his name was. Um, dude. He he. They presented him like he was some kind of like like a monster, like he was a beast, like he was a main eventer. They haven't captured that magic even a little bit in Impact. And um, yeah, man, I, I I keep saying the word comedy a whole lot, and that's that's not what this was. It was just an attempt at comedy. I think they next week it has the potential to be a really good episode. I just did not like. I, I didn't like the flashbacks. Um, I'm not into those. I think some people are. I'm personally not. There's some times where I, you know, I'll watch it. I think it's cool. I'm not really into it. If I'm going to watch flashbacks, I think I'd have more interest in the in the knockouts. Because I think we've had a lot of loyal knockouts. Um, more so than the guys. So, yeah. So, that that's just my quick uh, quick thoughts on this real quick, folks. You go, you know. Feel free to to let me know what you think about the show. I think some people did enjoy it. From what I've seen, some people some people did. I'm not saying I give it a zero out of ten by any means. There was there was parts that I enjoyed. You know, I didn't want to. I wasn't necessarily going to shut it off, but I was ready for it to be over. And you know, as I said earlier, I don't think Impact can afford to phone it in. I don't think I don't think they can afford doing bad comedy you're not going to see that on ring of honor 
Now, to me, Ring of Honor is insanely vanilla and boring and could use a little bit of um, a little bit of color, you know, but th this this just I'm just I'm glad it was over. I'm ready for next week. Next week looks really, really promising. Thanks for swinging by. Please hit subscribe. Talk to you soon.